everyone. Welcome to my channel. My name is Kathy. If you are new here, thanks so much for stopping by. If we have painted together before, welcome back. I'm glad you're here. Today's technique video is going to be how to paint a basic leaf. There are actually several different leaf shapes out there that we will be exploring in future videos, but today it's just the basic leaf that we are going to be working on. So let's take a look at what supplies we'll be using for today and then we will get started. So today we are going to use two different colors. We have aqua and wicker white. We are using folk art multi-surface paint. Now, full disclosure, this is not a sponsored or endorsed video. I just really believe in sharing with you guys the paints that I use, the colors I use, the brushes I use, and things that I've used for years. So I know that they work well with this paint technique that we're going to be doing. So folk art multi-surface is great because you can use it on anything that you're painting. So whether you're painting on a wine glass or a canvas or wood or tin, multi-surface will work great no matter what type of project that you're working on. It is a little bit thicker paint, which is actually what I really like for doing this one stroke uh, method of painting, which you'll see when we get into something called double loading. So, um, okay, so we have aqua and wicker white. We have two paint brushes we're gonna be using today. This is a flat brush. It is a number 12 flat brush. This brush is actually a folk art one stroke brush. I will also, um, link in the comments once the video is done. I will have the paints that we use, the colors, all that good stuff. And I will link um, the onestroke.com website. This is where I get my brushes. But honestly, you guys, whatever flat brush you have at home will work just fine. Again, I just like sharing what I use and what I've used for years. We also have a number one liner brush and we will talk about how to get the paint on each of these brushes here in just a moment. I'm gonna scooch these out of the way. Other supplies that we have here today, I do have my styrofoam plates. This is my very fancy paint palette, as you can see. Um, we'll talk about how to get the blobs of paint on there and how to space them apart here in just a moment, but just a simple styrofoam plate here. Kind of off camera here a little, but I have a brush basin that just has the water to rinse my brushes. So whatever you have at home, guys, a cup, a styrofoam cup would be just fine too. So styrofoam plate, water, um, on the table here is some wax paper. Whether you paint with me at home or if you paint with me live or in person, there will always be wax paper. This is what we practice on. So we will talk about how to get the paint on the brush and we will practice all of our strokes here on the wax paper. And then if we were painting a project together, we would then go to the project after practicing on the wax paper. So one thing that I just really appreciate about this method of painting and what I want for you guys is to keep this very cost effective. Okay, we're talking, we've got craft paint, some wax paper, some styrofoam plate, not a huge um, investment to get started. And I want you guys to be able to paint at home and play and try new things. So I want it to be um, not an expensive habit. So the one thing I will tell you though, as I've learned over the years, is if you're really enjoying painting and playing with at home, get a nice set of brushes. It, it really makes all the difference in how your stroke, whether it's the one stroke that I'm showing you here, or they're just any, just a nice set of brushes. It really makes a difference when you're doing your stroke. So, okay, well, let's jump right in. I'm going to grab my plate. Now, if you guys would go ahead and get your blobs of paint on, and I, I've got my aqua here, and then you can see there's some space in between here, and then the white. Okay, and I'm going to show you why here in a sec. We're going to do something called a blending spot. So go ahead and get your puddles of paint. I am going to grab my flat brush. We're going to start with this one first. And we are going to do something called double loading. And basically what that means is we're putting both of these colors, so two colors, on one paintbrush. So let me show you how we do that. So we're going to start with our brush straight up and down. I'm going to dip one corner in the aqua, the other corner in the white, and then we are going to blend a spot here, okay? And I want the aqua by the aqua and the white by the white. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna touch that brush down to the styrofoam, pull it towards you, push away. Towards you, push away. And you wanna keep the aqua on the aqua and the white on the white, okay? Can you guys see the blending spot? So what we're doing is we're actually working paint up into this paintbrush, okay? The really cool thing about double loading is what's gonna happen is you're gonna get color highlight shading all in one stroke. So that's why when you're first trying this method that I'm gonna show you, it's really neat if you can do a darker color and a lighter color. And you can kind of see why, because you're really gonna see the benefits of double loading. You're gonna see all the different shades in the color, which is, it's pretty neat. Okay, we're gonna do this, you guys, about three or four times. So dip in your aqua again, dip in your white. And you guys could really be doing any color at home. I'm just using the aqua and the white here. I thought, why should we do green? 
for leaves when we could do something fun like aqua. Change it up a little bit. All right. So probably, gosh, three or four times you guys dip in, blend, 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 dip. And if you can see on my brush here, we're talking a good amount of paint. I really want this brush to be goopy. And the reason why you'll see when we start practicing is you really want a lot of paint on this brush so it just glides as you're practicing these leaves. Okay. The other thing I would tell you, when you're doing this blending spot, keep going in the same spot. I I've, I've know when people are first starting this method of painting, they tend to move all over. Like their blending spot just goes all over the plate. We don't really want to do that. We want to keep it right here in the same spot. Um, we have better things to paint than the plate. So the, really the purpose of this is just to really get that, that paint up there. Okay. All right. I'm going to scooch this off to the side. And we're going to go to our wax paper and practice this leaf. Okay, so we are going to start with our brush straight up and down so the handle's kind of pointing to the ceiling. Now, I'm going to sort of angle. So if you look at this brush, if it were straight up and down, the aqua's on the top and the white's on the bottom closest to my body. I'm going to just rotate that just a little bit so that aqua's pointing at about 10 o'clock. Okay, if you picture a clock. We, we don't want to go straight up. We actually want to be just a little bit curved, just a little bit to the angle. And I'm going to start here and we'll just kind of build some leaves as we're going up. All right, so I am going to touch to the wax paper. Remember that aqua is pointing at 10 o'clock. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna be building these leaves going away from your body, so just straight up, okay? I'm going to lean this brush down, okay? I leaned it forward so it's leaning away from me. Can you see how these bristles are kind of squished? They're kind of poofed out, okay? So, and I haven't moved the brush at all. All I've done is lay it down. Now I am going to slide as I lift up I'm sliding forward, I'm lifting up, lifting up, lifting up, okay? And I will end up on the edge of my brush, okay? I'm gonna do that again. It's actually harder when you go slower, but I'm trying to go slow so you guys can see what my brush does here, okay? Now, you will notice after you do a couple strokes here that you do need to go pick up paint. And when you do, you do exactly what we did. Dip each corner, swoosh it back and forth, okay? All right, I'm gonna come here just right next to it and we'll, let's do another one. So again, starting straight up and down, my aqua's pointing at about 10 o'clock. I'm gonna lay it down forward, squoosh it forward. Now I'm gonna slide as I'm sliding, I'm lifting, I'm lifting, I'm lifting. And then I end up on the edge of my brush. One thing that I have seen as people are learning this stroke is they tend to start sliding and then abruptly lift their brush up. What that's gonna do is you're not gonna get a point. Okay, you need to slide as you're lifting. So let's do another one here. So starting aquas at 10 o'clock, I'm going to lean it forward, squish it down, slide, just sliding straight up. I'm not curving to the right or to the left. We're just going straight up. Okay, and these are probably about an inch, an inch long. They don't have to be real long. I will show you a couple longer ones just to kind of um, show you the difference between the two. But let's do another one here. Okay, I'm going to start. Aqua's at 10 o'clock. I'm going to squish down. I haven't even slid yet. I'm just squishing down. Now I'm sliding straight up, straight up. As I'm lifting, I'm sliding. And you see, I end up back on the edge of that brush. And that's what will give you that point. Okay, so again, squish down as you're sliding, lift up. And you'll see each of these, I am going straight ahead. As you're practicing this method with this leaf, it's just best if you practice going one direction, okay? After you've mastered this shape, you'll be able to paint leaves, you know, left, right, up and down. But when you're first starting, just mastering it going in one direction will be great because you can always rotate your surface if you need to. So if you get good at doing a leaf in one direction, all you have to do is turn your surface, do a leaf, turn your surface, do a leaf. So just right now, we're just concentrating on doing one direction and it's easiest if you start just pushing away. Okay, and again, we're not curving to the left or the right or anything. Let's do one more, or a couple more here. Okay, I'm going to start leaning it forward, leaning it away from me, squish down, slide forward, lift up. And you guys, you can kind of see my brush leaves. I'm coming over here and just reloading, same way we did when we put it on the brush. Okay, so we're going to start here, lay it down away from me, pushing away, and lift up. Okay. I will tell you guys, this stroke, when I was first teaching myself this method of painting, this was the one stroke that really got me. I don't know why. I could do a rose that had 17 different petals on it and was beautiful, but this leaf 
for whatever reason, just drove me crazy. It took me a hot minute of practicing to get it. So please don't be frustrated if you're trying it for the first time and it's not going well. I will tell you, the more you do it, the better it gets and the easier it gets. Because once it clicks, like you'll feel your hand sliding and lifting and you'll know exactly when you hit that leaf. And it's very exciting. <laughs> okay, so these are all about an inch long. They're not real big. Um, you can tell they're kind of curved at the bottom because that's when we squoosh that brush down. It sort of poofs it around. Let me show you a little bit longer leaf because it's really the same thing. We just slide on that brush for a lot longer than we had been. Okay, so I'm going to start here. I'm going to start the exact same way. I'm going to lay it down, but this time I'm going to drag up and slowly lift as I'm coming. Okay, so I'm ending the same way with that brush up top, but a lot longer. So if you were doing something like tulips, um, oh, I just drew a blank on the other side. Anyway, something with a really long leaf. Okay, it's the same stroke. You just don't live, you just go a lot slower as you're lifting that brush and going. Okay. All right, so that's that shape. Let me also show you how we do our stems. Now, at this point, we are going to grab our little skinny liner brush. You can do stems with that flat brush. Um, it works just fine. But when you're first starting out, I would recommend doing the little skinny brush because it just gives you a little better control and your, your stem is skinnier. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to dip in our aqua here. Now, this brush, we don't swoosh back and forth like we did with the bigger one. With this one, let me see if I can get my hand in here. You're going to dip in the paint, and then you're going to roll it. So you're going to roll it between your thumb and your pointer there. So just dip in, roll that paint. And what that's going to do, it's going to put the paint on the brush, but it's also going to keep that tip together. Okay. Now, this brush we use actually kind of like a pen or a pencil. If you think of it that way, we're going to um, just be straight up and down and you're going to hold it kind of down a little bit lower like you would a pen or a pencil and that'll give you um, some nice control. I also joke if you stick your pinky out, that forces you to have a little bit of a lighter stroke. So plus I call it fancy painting when your pinky's out. But um, as far as adding the stem, it's up to you. I go from the bottom up into my leaf, but if you're more comfortable starting in the leaf and coming down, that is okay too. It's whatever you're comfortable with. But we just kind of want to start from the outside the leaf um, and come about halfway up. Okay, so you don't want the, the stem to go all the way up in the leaf. But we're just going to start. We're going to touch just right to the edge of the surface and then just paint a line. Okay, we're coming out. Now, again, if you're more comfortable starting at the leaf and coming down, that is okay too. For whatever reason, I just tend to go up from the bottom and into the leaf. Okay. So barely touching, and that gives you some nice stems there. Okay, and we'll do the stem here and the stem here. Okay, let me lift this up, and then I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you, we're going to do a couple vines, and then we'll do some clusters of leaves, just so you can kind of get an idea of what you can do with this leaf shape. Um, I will tell you, this shape also, we use it for a lot of different things. Here, let me lift this up a little bit so you can see a little bit closer. But this shape that we're doing is obviously a leaf, and I'm going to show you it next to some flowers here in a minute. But it is also the shape that we use when we make sunflowers. This is the shape of the sunflower petals. When we do birds, this is the shape. This longer shape is the shape of the body, and this shorter shape would be the shape of the wings. So once you master this shape, you will begin to see it in a lot of the other projects that we do. Okay, let me scooch this out of the way, and we will go back to our wax paper. I'm going to grab my flat brush back again, and I'm gonna put some fresh paint on it. So we're ready to do this, and I'm gonna show you some vines, and then we'll do a couple leaf clusters. And then I'll show you a couple other projects just to kind of give you an idea of what leaves can be used for. Okay, so we're back on our wax paper. I'm gonna start with my brush straight up and down, the handle's pointing to the ceiling. The aqua is closest to my body and the white is on top. So the white is actually going to be leading the way. Okay. And we're just going to do a couple, just kind of a couple zigzags here, a couple vines. All right. So I'm going to touch right on the edge of the brush. And I'm just going to push away and kind of give it a little bit of a curve. Okay. So just a simple vine. And even when we're doing something like this, can you guys see the color highlight shading? Like there's some aqua, there's some white, kind of a combination. That's just, again, the fun thing about double loading. All right, I'm just going to kind of swirl 
a couple little vines. So just a couple vines in place here. And we're going to do just a few clusters of leaves. Okay. All right. I'm going to do a cluster here so you guys can see it. I'm going to start same way we did. Squish down, slide. Now, for the sake of you guys seeing how we can do this, mine are going to angle a little bit. But just remember what we said. Once you get that leaf going in one direction, you can always turn your surface however you need to to get an angle. So if you need a, a leaf going to the right or a leaf going to the left, you just turn your, your surface. For, for right now, I'm just going to show you um, how to just get them on here. And we're not going to worry about turning because I just want you guys to see the, the end product. Okay. So here we go. We have a cluster of three leaves here. I'm going to do another one here. Okay, so I'm going to squish down, slide, and get three of them there. And you know what? I might do another one up here. Just we've got some room. So let's throw a leaf or two up here. Okay. All right. Let me grab my liner brush, and we will come back and add our stems. Do you remember this one? We just sort of rolled it in the paint. Get that paint loaded on there, kind of twirl it between your fingers and keep that point together. Okay, so let's add some leaves here. Now, instead of them just floating out in the world, this is where we kind of want to attach our stems to our vine. So I'm going to start at this vine here and pull up into that leaf and into that leaf and into that one. Okay, I'm going to start down here on this vine and we'll do a stem here stem here and a stem on that one and then we'll attach our top ones here so again just it doesn't matter if you start at the leaf and come down or start below and go up for me going up just works better but it's whatever you're comfortable with okay I'm gonna add just a couple of polka dots in here as some filler and to do polka dots I am going to take this little brush that we just used and I'm gonna turn it upside down and I'm gonna use the handle here so I'm going to come over to my white paint. I'm going to swirl that around a little bit just to get some paint on the handle. And if you dip in the paint and then tap, it gives you a perfect polka dot every time. I love using the handle of the brush for polka dots. And I know it's white, so I'm hopefully you guys can see that on there. Just the little polka dots. We're going to come back here and just add a couple polka dots. It's like the baby's breath if you're you know, doing floral arranging. So I'm going to just dip in the paint and tap. And I'm just going to do little clusters of three dots. Okay, just to kind of add a little filler, just because I love polka dots. Okay, and then we'll come over here. I'm dipping in the paint, and then we tap, dip, tap, dip, tap. Okay, let me lift this up so you guys can take a look at it and see it. But that is it for our basic leaf. Now, we will be doing, um, I've got a couple more videos coming where we do a little fancier leaves. Um, one with a little wiggle leaf and a heart-shaped leaf. So keep an eye out for those. Those will be launching soon. Okay, you guys kind of see just some real basic vines. Think how cute this would look, like on a piece of wood or around a picture frame. Or gosh, around a wine glass. That would be very pretty. Okay, let me show you one other thing over here. Well, actually, two other things. We were talking about building your leaf and doing the stems. Now, if you are putting a leaf next to flowers... What you want to do is you want to start at the flower and come out. These are a lot smaller, but I was hoping they would show up pretty well here. Um, so you start at the leaf and come down. So remember we talked about when you're first learning, getting those leaves going one direction. So if I were painting these flowers and I wanted to add this leaf, I would turn this project upside down and have my leaves going in the direction that I felt comfortable making them. Okay, so I would start at this flower and the leaf coming down and then add the little stem. This is a little bit smaller brush, but same shape. Here's another sample of what you can do with these leaves. Okay, let me try to not to get a glare. This is the same leaf shape and it makes a fern. Okay, so I just started at the bottom and you just do up one side and then up the other side, just leaf, 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 and then you have a really cool fern. So again, this shape can be used for lots of different things and you guys will see it again in future videos for sure. 
So on that note, if you enjoyed this video, if you would please hit that like button below to let me know that you enjoyed it, I would really appreciate it. There is also a subscribe button if you would consider clicking on that. That would be amazing. Um, that just lets you know when I upload future videos and there is a lot more fun technique videos and project videos coming down the road. So I would love if you would join me for painting those. So thank you so, so much for painting with me today. I hope it was fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I hope you're at home playing with paint and trying new things. That's just the best part. So again, everything will be listed in the comment section below. If you have any questions or suggestions or feedback, please drop those in the comments below too. That would be great. Thank you guys so much. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.